One, two, three. Yes, it's the Late Late Breakfast Show with your host, Bernie J. Mitchell. Are you in? Are you in? Hello and welcome to episode, I think I should check really, but it's like 80, might even be 90 now, but... Is it 90? Very is good. Is it 90? I don't really? know. And um, with me as sometimes infrequently is <laughs> Mr. Andy Bardry. Hello, Bernie. What's, uh, what's your uh, portfolio career, freelancing portfolio career delivering at the moment? My freelancing portfolio career at the moment is delivering marketing communications advice and consultancy to small companies. Which is, which is why we're sitting here, because if I hired Andy, I'd have to, you know, sell my family, but I uh, tell him we're going to do a podcast, he'll just sit here and work hubs and uh, <laughs> pontificate. We'll do it for free. For free. So um, we were going to talk about SEO, but I've um, we, we sort of suddenly started talking about video, and that seems more... You know, Interesting. Because we, we go with what we're there, you know, we're like <laughs> on the thing. So um, what... Obviously, like... We we just been watching the co-pass and the and the work hub to video and there's, we we what spot my interest was talking about what people use their YouTube channel you YouTube channel YouTube channel <laughs> it's so hot here <laughs> you're melting I am yeah um and it doesn't help drinking hot tea either but um what do people use their YouTube channel for because we've all we all open a YouTube channel and so I think you get one when you open up a Gmail account you're given a YouTube mm-hmm. account aren't you as well and and quite often people will just pop a couple of videos on there and forget all about it that kind of thing we used to have with blogging which is if you build it they will come but of course they don't these days because there's so much information available on the web that if you haven't thought through your strategy as to how you're going to use video it probably won't generate much of a response for you so how, how do you who, who is killing it on YouTube at the moment well I think there's a number of YouTubers that really are making a lot of impact and a lot of money off the back of it as well just by showing who they are and what they're doing and, and giving some ideas to their personality and having fun online uh, you know a couple of people like KSI look up KSI uh, he's just having a good time on YouTube basically making an awful lot of money out of it and there are lots of Big YouTubers that are doing that. Is he the guy? He's a presenter, YouTube presenter. Is he the one with the glasses and the he posts every day? Ah, uh, he probably does post every day. Does he wear glasses? But for the life of me, I can't picture him right now. But he might do. Yeah. And the like in terms of a business thing, I've, yesterday. Oh, anyway, wherever it was, I was I was reading this um, blog about basic income by a chap called Scott Strattons, and he said right. about how. I don't know, just the way we consume media is changing. So he had a he had a cable channel and cancelled the cable channel and moved and then just started in between moving. He was watching um started watching YouTube and then he found a couple of things on YouTube of people like you and me that post regularly and thought, why am I paying the cable channel for all that shit for <laughs> ninety seven million channels and I only really like one of them. If you if you haven't really explored YouTube, you don't really know how good it is actually. And, and I'm one of those people until about three months ago. I, just, I knew of YouTube. I'd posted a couple of videos. I'd watched plenty on there. But until I started to actually look at it and understand it and subscribe to channels, I didn't realise just how good it really is. It is. And how much content there is on there to enjoy for free, basically. Um, so it's a brilliant, brilliant platform. And I think it's been somewhat overlooked in the last few years because Google really messed it up when they made you have a YouTube, sorry, a Google Plus account profile to yeah. be able to access and engage on YouTube. And I think that um, alienated quite a few people. That, that pissed a lot of people Yeah, off. particularly those YouTubers that had been established and using the channel then had to start working with Google Plus, which as we all know is a bit of a shambles. Um, but YouTube is still a brilliant, brilliant platform for entertainment, basically. Do you know about YouTube Red? YouTube Red. Tell me about YouTube Red. <gasps> right. You will never need Spotify again and all that. So there's um, it's only available in some countries at the moment. But there's YouTube Red, which means you can get an app on your phone, subscribe to YouTube with no adverts, and then just whatever's on YouTube, you can just download and put on your phone. Well, so, you, you pay a fee for that, right? A monthly fee? Yeah, it's like, but it's like yeah. 11, you know, it's in that sort of 10 to $15 thing. So You're you right, it's not available here. I think it's just in the US and Australia right now, isn't it? Something like that. And like Netflix do, Netflix originals, like yeah. Get Down, which I'm a little bit addicted to at the moment. <laughs> um, they, um, 
you, there's there's YouTube originals. Maybe we have those already, and I miss them. But I don't think we have it. Maybe not in this country. I'm not sure. But uh, YouTube Red, I have heard about. It. Just because it's not here yet, I don't know much about I'm it. I'm going to be getting myself some YouTube Red because then you get access to there's all there's stuff you can't find Spotify and uh, Apple Music and you know like things like specific Gap Band songs and Marillion tunes and stuff prints that. There's a lot of music on YouTube, yeah. actually. Much yeah. of it is on the on the Vivo channels, isn't it? But I, I think, I, you know, I was watching my favourite song ever in the world is the JCB song. Do you know that one? By a band called Niz Loppy. No. Watch it, because you'll like it, because it's, um, it's all about a little boy spending time with his dad, and it basically kills me every time I watch it. But the video is, um, is animation, basically, of this guy, this little boy, and he's... In his dad and their JCB. It's a really, really nice song. Link in the chat. Oh, so it's not. I thought it was like a sort of you know, Foo Fighters type thing. No, no, yeah. no. It's a really gentle song, but it's it's just lovely if you watch it. It's one for dads. Okay, if you're a dad, which you are, Bernie, yeah. obviously, you'll probably appreciate really? it. Really? Oh. And, and if you don't, then maybe it's just me being a bit soppy and soft. I'm um, I'm, I'm with that soppiness. Yeah. yeah. I, since you have children, it just you change. Yeah. But you know, you, YouTube as well is a great environment for kids because they have their YouTube for Kids app which basically cuts out all of the very dodgy, dubious content that yeah. children can't see. Well, that's the stuff my son likes, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not going to comment on that. Hopefully, we sinking, just see Sinking spears into the head of aliens and stuff like that, you know. <laughs> try, try to do some Peppa Pig on him and he's not interested. <laughs> not enough killing in Peppa. Yeah. Um, but YouTube's a great little platform, and, and I think that what we'll find... and Part of my reason for thinking this is there was some lots and lots of research released in the last couple of years from people like Ofcom and, and obviously YouTube are shouting about the fact that video is growing. But maybe a few months ago, somebody at Facebook said that they expect within the next couple of years that 90% of content on Facebook will be video. So there's a whole shift towards the type of content, the type of information we consume online. It's moving away from blogs and images and stuff into into video format. And what... Cause what all the podcasting people are saying is that podcast the future is if you go and see a blogger it's the future is blogging but <laughs> um, if you podcast you can you don't have to watch you can take it anywhere you like with you and you can yeah. run and all that type of stuff so that's the case of podcasting but what's, what's, what is it with video because there's, there's Facebook Live there's Snapchat and um, Instagram have got that video um, thing which I, I think it's just more engaging there's more depth to it you know having to read you can consume it quite easily there's no effort to watching a bit of video you know it's just um, it doesn't require any real effort from you as a consumer to enjoy it you know I can just sit there and vegetate watching stuff on YouTube quite comfortably and be entertained and engaged by that and as you scroll through your news feed on Facebook for example guarantee the first thing that catches your eye is the moving image you see from a video um, so that kind of stuff I think it makes it an engaging medium to work with as a marketeer as well and what about thing, what about the live streaming element Oh. Yeah, Facebook Live is really, really interesting. I think uh, I've yet to see anything on there that I've, I've really thought, wow, that's that's a great application of Facebook Live. But you know, it's fairly young, isn't it? And I think there'll be, I think as that grows, people get used to it, people get better at using that format. It'll be very, very engaging. Yeah, equivalent to that, I suppose, is you see people using Snapchat and, and kind of live streaming their lives, as it were. Um, there's a lot of absolute drivel out there, but you know, if you're prepared to, to spend your time looking for the good stuff, then you'll find it. Well, I also think from a, a brand point of view, um, not that I'm a, a brand brandy person, but if something's the more real something is, the more inclined I am to watch it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'd All agree right. with that as well. Because you can tell a really authentic story. You can tell by looking at a video, you can see someone's expression, the way they're talking the way they're telling their story as to whether there's authenticity in that and you know you can engage that more easily if there's an advert for uh, clothes with Kylie Minogue and Leonardo DiCaprio in it I might go oh that's quite good but you know if I see like <laughs> some of some people that look a little bit more like me on a handheld shaky video camera riding a scooter I think oh, I, could, I, could, I could pull it off you know it, it's more it's more in my world so maybe we is it does it make more sense to make perhaps apparently crapper quality video that's more real than... I, I think it's a real mixed bag. We were kind of just talking before the sh you hit record on the on the, your device here that 
some of the big brands are getting this wrong because they're looking at video as a way just to stitch together a bunch of commercials and they're going to their ad agencies to create those commercial, those advert-driven videos to push out through YouTube. But what people are actually looking for is a slightly more authentic, engaging experience. So that slightly less polished or more raw video performance is probably going to be more engaging when put out through social media than a really high polished advert. Not to say that there isn't scope for adverts as well, because there always will be, because adverts are an art form really doing it's done really, really well. But I think you've got an opportunity here to look at it from both sides. It's not advert, it's perhaps more, uh, not advertising, it's perhaps more engaging content. It's more so storytelling. There's a, there's a whole riff on um, the Rainmaker guys and the copy blocker guys about media, not marketing. And it's producing and it's, it goes back to that's the same point yeah it, it's you're using that media but that medium to tell a story it's not selling all the time what's the Jay Bay book about being useful you, 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 another one you mean yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. coming about five minutes but you, you, oh, utility utility marketing something so, like that yeah. yeah so creating creating media that's like you know, I hate the word engaging as well. You know, like engaging or you, you, stuff you want to watch and share and is is relevant to you is is great. But there's, I still think there's a lot of people who misunderstand creating stuff versus ad like this. But there's still people that kind of want to do their do their brochure online. And there'll still always be room for that, right? People have still got to tell us commercial message you might have on your website, as you just showed me for the, for this fine establishment at WorkCubs, so a video telling, uh, promoting here and using the customers of WorkCubs to tell people how great it is to work in this space. I think that's a great, I mean, great it is to work in this space. And there'll always be it is great, isn't it? room it's for that. It's just amazing here, isn't it? It's warm, but yeah, it's it not great. a space. Got good people, good atmosphere in WorkCubs. Um, but there's also an opportunity for those that can tell a more authentic story to have a kind of ongoing narrative helping people using video as a format. So one of the, one of the I'm not quite sure how this connects to what you just said, but one of the best things I've ever, still I've ever seen on um, YouTube is the uh, Will It Blend stuff. Yes, I still love Will It Blend. They, 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 yeah. they nailed it with that. <laughs> yeah. Blend Tech. So, do, you want to, do you want to explain it? Because so Blend Tech is a is a manufacturer in America that makes food blenders, and their their kind of USP was it can blend anything, and so the way they proved this was they had the I think the founder of the company in a uh, a lab environment with a lab coat on yep. with a Blend Tech blender right in the middle of this bench, and each week or month, however the schedule was, they would blend something different, like an iPhone or a car. A I don't think they blended a car or a I toy car. I bet they did. They blended some um, glow sticks, which I thought was quite a good one. But they're just just trying to show the power of how good the blenders were because they could blend anything. And it was such a successful campaign for them. I know they, they released a case study to show actually how they saw uplift in sales based on those. It was those, ridiculous. Wasn't yeah, it? It yeah. Was, they, they, them and um, Gary Vaynerchuk were the social media YouTube darlings of their Yeah, time. absolutely. They, they, they got it exactly right with Blendtec. Kudos to those guys. And the, the way he came with, the way he came around with Blendtec, do, you know, do you know how it started? No, go on. So, so um, there was a marketing manager who goes, we, he was hired and he's like, we sell blenders here and you've got to find a way to blend them. And he, he was walking around the, it was, it was like three months you'd been there going, I don't know what we're going to do because you know, can make some brochures, do an advert and do yeah. some banner advertising. Um, and then he walked into the boardroom one day and he saw the the CEO with them. I think there's some, I think it, legend would have it, but let's just go with it anyway. There were a the load of guys from Starbucks around the boardroom table and the, the CEO was pounding this um, huge bit of wood into a blender to prove how robust it was. And he's like, that's it. We'll just video that and put it on put it on YouTube yeah. and it and that's and it was away from there. And the rest as they say is history. Yeah. yeah. But it was it was really, really cost I suppose, is, that, is that guerrilla marketing? I don't know. It's like uh, it would have been I don't a, know what the term for that is. It was a honest. marketing hack. It was a viral marketing hack. Great. Yeah. yeah, maybe it was a marketing hack. I don't yeah. know really. But it's it's such a simple idea. It was engaging and, and you know, you see lots of formats on YouTube that I think are really interesting, like challenge type videos or we've been doing some stuff with some um, sports stars and giving them some ideas around the different types of formats they can use, not Usain Bolt, unfortunately. No. For, for, the, for the audio, those yeah. aren't in the room, but did Usain Bolt's, uh, what, what is that, his pose? It's he pointed whatever, to whatever it is, it's cool. Yeah. What is that called? 
It's not the mobot because that's. Oh! <laughs> but yeah, no, I think there's so much scope for creativity using video, and and what's great about it is that the cost of producing good videos come down. You know, it's much more approachable as a medium. You know, now you can record a decent quality video, some audio on your iPhone, really, as long as you're careful about how you edit it and produce it and put it out. There's no reason why anybody couldn't start doing video and creating YouTube channels. And if you, because um, we've, we've sat through a lot of video classes, haven't we, over the years, if, if you're going to record something on video, if you work it out a little bit beforehand, you could probably get it in you know, one take and then just upload it straight away. Yeah. Yeah, if you if you were really careful about it, absolutely. And then when you get onto YouTube, this is something I always got stamped with and was delighted when I found out you could do it. You can just put a, you can put a, what do you call it? You can put. A, I don't know. I'm not sure where you're going yet. I'm big fish, little fish, big fish. <laughs> you're dancing away you, in the you room. Can, you can screw. You can um, choose your screenshot. Your and thumbnail. You, and you can make a thumbnail in there, so it will yeah. say like you know Andy Bardry, weddings, funerals, and bar mitzvahs <laughs> as, 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 the, as the holding thing. Yeah, you can do that. In the thumbnail, your thumbnail strategy is really important when it comes to your success on YouTube as well. If you look at successful YouTube channels, one of the things they do really, really well is they make sure it's clear on the thumbnail who's in the video and why you should watch it with really clear titles. And they're consistent about how they approach that. And that helps to people to understand and engage with your channel because they know what the quality of the content is going to be when they see it at the, at the top level. And there's two free tools you can use for that. Go on then. Canva. Okay. And Pablo, which is by Buffer. And there's... Tell me about Canva and Pablo. I know I've heard of Canva, but I have no idea what Pablo is. Pablo is... Uh, it's, by, it's by Buffer who do the social media stuff. And you can choose a picture or upload a picture and then write text over it. And it's a web-only application, so you can't... You know, download it or do you can't do much to it, but you can just have a picture, make it lighter or darker, and put some words in the middle. So it's what I use for all my. After searching around every bloody app known to man, I went. I wonder if this one works that I've been looking down on for years. And that's that's Pablo or Canva. That, that, that's Pablo. Okay. So Pablo, Pablo Picasso is that right? Yeah. And, and then Canva is um, as a free and a paid one but the only difference with the paid one is there's more storage and you can resize images and some okay. some more technical stuff yeah but that's where you can just like layer pictures over each other so I can up so for the okay. show notes that's what I use to make that you know picture of Andy and Mitch Joel uh, <laughs> at Google <laughs> and then I put, I put the Late Late Breakfast Show logo on there Got and you. change the writing so they're kind of like online cut down versions of Photoshop to yeah, create those thumbnails yeah, yeah perfect perfect and, and they're but really that, really easy to use that makes all the difference to have those 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 thumbnails produced like that and looking really sharp yeah, and, and they do look yeah. they do look sharp they're, yeah, they're, they're, they're easy to use as well like if you spend a, if you spend an hour tinkering around in it, and then you'll be able to sort It'll of set up, a, set up a template and, and you're away. Cool. There was something else there that was um, so the, the the other eye rolling thing was um, telling your story. You know, cause, <laughs> uh, one of us had to like bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> we we want the storytelling. Okay. Yeah. So, so what does that what does that mean? Because we know what that means. We 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 so know what it means that we just go, oh no, not telling a story again. But it, it's you know for people who run a co-working space or a shop or an architect's, how do they even well, begin to tell their story? Let's talk about a co-working space. For me, the story of a co-working space is what it's like as a place for people to come along and to work and to meet people and network and, and grow their solo businesses, right? So the story is the narrative of this space. So showing what it's like to be in here and working in here and who else is here, who are you like to meet and what value do you offer as a co-working space beyond a desk? You know, how can you help people to grow their what their business is, what they're doing? And that kind of narrative links back to your overall marketing plan. What is it what does it you stand for? Mm. What is it that you want to communicate and how can we tell that? story of what you can deliver and how you can help people through your video um, and I think that that video is a great platform for doing that for a co-working space just to put you massively on the spot here can you, can you think of a video I can link to in the show notes that really tells the story I think you should put well the video you showed me a little bit earlier on kind of starts to tell the story but it's much more a promotional yeah. piece isn't it but start with that because you kind of got the the basics there of what that might look like but um you know, I'm gonna to have to come back to you on yeah. other suggestions right on the spot. Because the one I always think, the one I love the most ever, I think, is the um, the Dollar Shave Club. 
That's again an advert, though, isn't it? Mm. You know, when he's walking through the factory, and it's—I mean, it's an amazing piece of advertising. Really good. Yeah, and I think they produced it on a really tiny budget as he well. Did. Yeah, uh, but that—that that nicely tells the story in in one. It's about a couple of minutes, isn't it? It's yeah. A couple of minutes. Yeah, it's not all long. in one. Yeah. N- it seems to be all in one take. I'm sure it isn't, no. but yeah, <laughs> look, it looks like it is. Uh, it would be amazing if that was all in one take. Um, it does tell the story rather nicely, but again, it's an advert. It's not uh, telling a, the narrative of your co-working space. Yeah, it's very, it's, it's quite it's quite hard to not look contrived, isn't it? Yeah, mm. yeah. But I, I think at the same time, you need to plan out. You need to be. You need to make sure that what you're covering in your video is of value. It's worthwhile. Going back to that utility marketing stuff earlier on is you know people are only going to. Um, really watch your video if they're entertained or educated by it. So, you know, pick one of the two and go for it. You know, make sure you match your personality, your business, to whether you're an educational business or an entertaining business. And, and, and to close, what about what? What are your thoughts are on like running a series, so doing a a video every week? Because I've heard, you know, we, we we know people that have done phenomenally well with that, and I know some people, particularly in co-working spaces, that have gone, oh, we did it like every week for. Six weeks, nothing happened. What was your, what's your? I think that if it's got to be consistent, it's like a blog or a podcast. It's exactly the same thing. If you're going to put it put it out, you know, once a week or on a regular basis, people know what to expect and they, they can subscribe to it and they might wait for it. It's like you and I are big listeners of uh, Mitch Joel Six Pixels podcast. Yeah, because he's always going to be there. Yeah, and and I know on a Monday morning as like, when I um, check into my iTunes that there'll be a new episode there, and I'm ready for it. I'm looking forward to it. But it can be the same with the video, you know, on, on YouTube. People look forward to that sort of content. So, just with a blog post or a podcast or any other form of social media, be consistent and be uh, regular with what you're producing, and people will engage with that better. And any final thoughts for the last six minutes? Yeah, well, the last six minutes. What we didn't talk about was different channels. You know, we've talked a lot about YouTube, but of course, part of the skill of being successful on YouTube or any social channel is the ability to promote what you're doing across all the different channels as well. So if you're producing a 10-minute video for YouTube, you want a 30-second cut down of that to promote it and drive traffic from Instagram as well, Mm -hmm. and same through Facebook. So if you're going to go to the trouble, expense, hassle of creating some video. Make sure you've got your content distribution strategy. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, the inverted sweating, commas. Sweating your assets. Yeah. Well, it's not about sweating the assets. I suppose it is, but it's about making sure people have nowhere to find your video. You know, YouTube's great. And it's, it's a huge environment, and there's, there's lots of competition. And, so, so with that, I, I'm, I'm now more inclined to upload video to my site so people can watch it there and post on your it to website yeah. so if it's on my website it's on my website and you can obviously it'll be a bit awkward if you do but you can tell me apart if this is the wrong thing so I'll, I'll load a video on my website because there's enough room to do it there and it plays really nicely and then I'll post it to YouTube as well but I, I'm reluctant to put the YouTube video on my website because people will be off to YouTube what, what? so you're putting it on you're not embedding the YouTube player on your site. No. You're like letting it straight into your site. Yeah. So then the question is, are people already coming to your site or can they find your videos on your site? So have you really well, so we are linking back to SEO. Is your site really well optimized for people to find that video by searching for your keywords? Or are, are you better off using YouTube as your video outpost because people are there looking for content? But would they get to my, I mean, obviously they could like scroll down and click the link, but would they, well, sleepwalk from uh, YouTube to my website. Well, I think you need to make your YouTube channel full of really great, interesting, engaging content so they subscribe there and you engage them there rather than necessarily trying to drive them to your website. You might be able to achieve that and, of course, links in the in the discussion area and the notes of the, of the episode is good, but at the same time, why do you want to get them away from YouTube? You want them to engage with you somewhere, right? Maybe... maybe I, it's, 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 I don't want them to leave my site. Why? I don't mind them leaving my site. You, know, so it's not like I'm... you haven't got a choice. They will leave. It, no matter how good your content is. Like I don't spend my whole time on the BBC, even though the BBC's website is full of great content. You know, I'll watch one thing and disappear off. I can't watch the BBC anymore. Why not? Because they've got the, they, now, we never had a TV license because we haven't got a TV. And now you have to have a TV license to watch it online. Right. 
but it's not as good as Netflix, but you wouldn't know that. <laughs> I don't have Netflix. Buy a TV license. Okay. That's why the BBC is free to air. But it's not free. To air. Okay. <laughs> but what I, anyway, this is, this is, we'll, we'll take this outside, Barger. <laughs> any, any, um, any, we, we, should we get to the other channels next time? Yeah, I think so. I mean, we haven't really talked much about Instagram or Snapchat. Sorry, or sorry to leave you cliffhanging but there, guys. I think that's probably enough, isn't it? There's enough video chat there. What are we on? 25 minutes. I think people yep. by now yep. are thinking, when are these guys going to stop talking? So all the things in there, we, we were going to put a link in the show notes to. The, um, the Canva and Pablo, which are Photoshop for free Photoshop for uh, beginners. The Blendtec video and the... Um, we didn't talk about it much, but you have to watch the La Shave Club if you if that's the only action you take as a result of your time with us today. And if you're a dad, watch the JCB song. We'll put a link into that as well. Lovely, yeah. lovely little video. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Cheers, Benny. Bring it in. Please go to BernieJMitchell.com forward slash podcast. Benny, we love your feedback.